morning everyone so i'm sure if you clicked on this video it's most likely because you want to know how i mix my version of a color similar to daniel smith's serpentine genuine if you haven't seen kim crick's video on it do check out her video she was very thorough with her explanation i'll leave her link down below so for today, I'll be showing you a comparison between the True Serpentine Genuine by Daniel Smith, Kim Crick's version using PBR11, and my version using Potter's Pink. Personally, I like using Serpentine Genuine as sap green in my palette. It's not too vibrant like most sap greens, and it's also not as muted as olive greens. One of the pigments Kim Crick used to mix her version is PBR11, or in Daniel Smith terms, Lunar Earth. The one I'm using today is Aquarius Brown by Roman Small, which is also PBR11. When swatched next to Potter's Pink, you can clearly see that although it's a brown color, it does lean orange. Whereas Potter's Pink looks almost like a granulating red next to it. As for the green component, today I'll be using Rembrandt's Sap Green made with PG7 and PY150. Realistically, I'd mix my own batch with more of the PY150, but for today's video, we're just going to use this Rembrandt Sap Green. As you can see here, I've done both mixes right on the paper so we can see the variations between more green or brown or more or less water. There definitely is an obvious difference in the resulting mixes, so it really comes down to preference. The reason I've chosen Potter's Pink is because a while ago I finalized my signature palette colors, which consisted of 12 colors. However, I do want to decide on a signature palette of 24 colors, but choosing colors 13 to 24 proved to be a lot more difficult. I rarely use PBR11 on its own because it's too opaque for my preference. However, I already love Potter's Pink on its own and in various mixes. I was looking at all the colors laid out and it somehow occurred to me that I should try Potter's Pink because it's also a granulating brown. Sort of. So I tried it and it worked like a charm. I'm aware my mixes in this video might not be very accurate in terms of ratio differences, but hopefully this video would have made you want to try using Potter's Pink instead, and you can now go off to try mixing your own versions of this. Personally, like I said, I'd add some more yellow to the mix, but that's just me. Okay, that's it for today. Let me know which one you prefer. I'm actually okay with both, but like I said, I'm trying to figure out which colors to go into my 24 color palette, so PBR11 had to go. Don't get me wrong, I love PBR11 too, but it just won't go into my 24 color palette. Hopefully, I can lock down some more colors and share that palette with you soon. Alright, thank you so much for watching everyone, don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.